After considering the pros and cons, Gary visits his GP and requests a PSA test. He discovers that his PSA level is elevated at 4.2 nanograms per mil. We discussed in episode one the possible causes of an abnormal PSA. After excluding some of these causes, Gary's GP recommends that he repeat the PSA in a few weeks, along with another test called the free to total PSA ratio. Men with prostate cancer have a greater fraction of PSA that is bound to other proteins in the blood, meaning that they have a lower free PSA level. Men with a free to total ratio of less than 10% have a 56% chance of having prostate cancer. Men with a ratio of 25% have only an 8% chance of harboring the disease. Unfortunately, Gary's repeat PSA remains elevated at 4 nanograms per mil, and his free to total ratio is 17.4%. Gary's GP therefore refers him to a urologist. In the past, all men would undergo a prostate exam as part of the assessment of their risk for prostate cancer. This involves a doctor placing a gloved finger up the back passage to palpate for any lumps on the prostate. In 18% of cases, prostate cancer is detected by examination alone, regardless of the PSA level. An abnormal prostate exam is associated with an increased risk of aggressive prostate cancer and is by itself an indication for biopsy. While the Royal Australasian College of General Practitioners no longer recommends prostate exam as a routine addition to PSA testing, it remains a vital part of assessment after referral to a urologist. Gary doesn't like the idea of having a prostate exam, uh, but then his wife, Julie, reminds him how she has to put up with pap smears, mammograms and childbirth, so having a prostate exam is really not such a big deal. Gary's urologist performs a prostate examination, which does not reveal any suspicious nodules. He recommends that Gary have an MRI of the prostate. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. This technology uses strong magnetic fields to create an image of the prostate and surrounding tissues. The scan takes about 30 minutes to perform and is interpreted by a specialist called a radiologist. An MRI does not diagnose prostate cancer. That requires examination of a sample of tissue taken through a procedure called a biopsy. The MRI can, however, allow more accurate biopsy and staging of prostate cancer by showing the location and extent of any cancer present. As of the 1st of July 2018, the Australian Government added prostate MRI to the Medicare Benefit Schedule for patients who meet specific criteria. Gary meets the criteria for a Medicare-funded MRI in that he is younger than 70 years old, has had a PSA greater than 3 nanograms per mil on two occasions, and his free-to-total ratio is less than 25%. We will discuss prostate MRI in more detail in our next episode.